welcome to the podcast. I think we're on episode 16 now, which is very exciting. I'm Emma. As usual, I'm not going to go through the whole thing because I couldn't be bothered. <laughs> so yeah, um, I just recorded a whole, pretty much a whole episode about Rufus, which I think you're really going to love. So I hope that helps you in your um, social distancing. Um, give you something to watch anyway. I'm sitting here with a hot water bottle. Um, I always like having a hot water bottle. It's this funny time of year where it's not warm but it's not cold. So, um, yeah, it's keeping me warm as I podcast today. So, competition. We have a winner. Um, thank you so much, everybody, for entering. I got so many interesting answers. There's a lot of Shetland, a lot of Valley Blacknose, a lot of Herdwick. Yeah, some brilliant answers, some sheep breeds I had never heard of. So I will definitely be researching those. Um, so yeah, that was really cool. So again, thanks for entering. And the winner is Marta Rodriguez, who I actually know, which is hilarious. Um, and I just use a comment picker an online comment picker. So congratulations, Marta. And um, hopefully I will see you soon to give you your prize. Actually, no, I won't. Now that everything's canceled, I won't see you. So I will post your prize to you. Um, and that just reminded me because in her comment, she was talking about, um, we had went to Ulster Wool for a tour. And um, when we were there, they gave us a really cool book. Um, British sheep and wool. So I just thought I would show this to you, Senna, so it was in her comments. But basically it goes through a lot of sheep breeds. Let me just get one just, just to show you what was in here. So say this, South Down gives you a picture of the sheep, close up of the face, details about the sheep, about the wool, the stable length, characteristics, origins, location. And uh, there's a whole book of this and we just got that when we were there too. And I don't know if you can buy it online, but it's, there's no price on it. So maybe you can't, um, but they gave us one when we were there for our tour. So I can't wait to get a proper look at this. I think it's really interesting. And it goes on as well to talk about all the, like Soway and Shetland and, Manx locked in, look at that. Check out those horns. Pretty cool. I actually have some yarn from the Manx locked in uh, sheep. So yes, I won't go through the whole book, but I'll maybe do a wee flick through at the end. Um, yeah, so some of you very astute uh, viewers noticed that I forgot to put in the Rufus footage from the last day and I did forget, so apologies about that. But I'll put it in this one instead. Um, but yeah, same as I've just recorded a whole episode with Rufus, maybe you'll be sick of looking at him. I don't know. <laughs> um, had a few people asking if what's going on with the whole shipping thing, is my yarn still shipping with the whole coronavirus thing? Yes, it's still shipping. I will continue to ship as long as Royal Mail continue to deliver. There probably will be some delays because it can't really be helped because they're probably working on a, a schedule of so many people on, so many people off, that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, I am I always work from home anyway, so I'm able to work away myself and just get orders out as they come in and stuff. So at the moment, I'm going ahead with the next shop update, um, but I'll be keeping an eye on things with Royal Mail to see um, to see what happens there and I will let you know but as at the moment as of now um, they're considered they are considered essential workers um, so they will hopefully keep going unless they all fall sick in one area say they all fall sick in Balamani then Balamani will probably shut and I will have to go to Coleraine or Balamina to deliver your parcels so yeah, um, so yeah, pretty much that's what's going on with that. So 
I also have plenty of stock. I have plenty of dye stuff. I have, yeah, so I think we'll be fine here. And I will just continue to make things as normal and unless I can't for some reason. My plan is um, if I can't sell yarn, I'm going to try my hand at designing. So I've been meaning to do that for a while anyway, so I might just make space for it in my calendar sooner rather than later. And I think I showed in a few episodes ago a shawl that I'm kind of half trying to design. So I'll probably continue with that. So don't fear. Um, I think I can meet your, meet your yarn needs. <laughs> um, so I'm going to pop in a kind of new section to the podcast now. Um, I'm going to put it under repairs. It sounds very utilitarian, but um, before everything happened, like a few weeks ago, I was in a local charity shop and I found a pair of jeans that I really liked. So they were four pounds. I bought the jeans. I was wearing the jeans. I loved the jeans. And I was really, really, really tired one night. And I went to take the jeans off and whatever I did, I stuck my thumb through them near the, where, the po where the back pocket is. So I was very disappointed and I knew if I didn't repair them soon that I just wouldn't do it. So a couple of days later when I had some free time, I took the jeans and basically got the sewing machine and not embroidered them, but kind of... I went back and forward, back and forward, back and forward because I found that patches don't, they don't feel comfortable. So I thought this might work. So back and forward, back and forward, back and forward so that um, you kind of build up a new fabric. So anyway, I'm going to um, put a little, uh, I'm going to show you what that looks like. Um, and I think it worked really well. So I'm really pleased with that. So yeah, I was basically just going forward and then just pressing on the back stitch back and forward, back and forward, and then moved it around so that I could patch in the hole because it was like a straight rip and it was also ripped at the belt loops on one of them. So I just did it the whole way down. So I'm going to put in a video about that now. Um, I also need to repair various um, hats um, that Rufus stole on me and he ripped up the baubles on I think actually maybe three out of four hats that I own <laughs> so that was really frustrating he seems to really like ripping up baubles and pom-poms so I've got three pom-poms to make I have two or three sweaters that I need to fix that my lovely dog ripped holes in <laughs> So that was very naughty of me to leave them out <laughs> where he could find them. So, um, yeah, so I'm thinking to have a more regular repair section to encourage me to repair things more often. Um, and that includes also some colour work that I might have to repair. Um, yeah, I don't know how that's going to go, but Repairs never seem as glamorous as making something new, but I think when you have repaired something, you get a greater sense of pride, maybe, um, and satisfaction from repairing something, even more than making something new. Um, so yeah, 
I don't know. Do you feel like that as well? Um, because I know I do. So I'm also, I brought this down to show you. I got this at Edinburgh Yarn Festival in 2018. No, 2019. 2018? 2019, it was, from uh, Daughter of a Shepherd. She had this hand cream and I got some on the recommendation of uh, the Camelborns. Um, it's Welsh Lavender and I don't know about you, but I've been washing my hands a lot, as probably everyone has been. Um, but I'm almost finished this. Uh, so I've had it, you know, I've had it a year and I've used it pretty much every day. But recently it's been more like three times a day. So I was going to order more and then I thought, you know what, I've got two more of you hand lotion bars to use so I'll, I'll use those first and then get another one of these. I like the way this is in a tin, it's very handy. So yeah, I like that. Works in progress. Well at the moment I still only really have two, two or three works in progress. Well I mean there's, I have like four but three of them are kind of um they're kind of waiting until I finish this. So I want to show you my um, Penguono, which I'm really enjoying knitting on. I've been working quite a bit since last week, so I think you'll see a difference. Okay, here we go. So I have completed the bag and I have completed the welts on both sides. And I did a little stripey side panel. That is the left side, right side. And I also am on the, I'm doing, I'm starting to do one of the front panels. So you see, this is the sleeve section. Actually, I'm just gonna show you this up close because this is the dorset that I showed you last week, dyed with alder held with a strand, the whole thing is held with a strand of Whistlebear's Weavering Bell. So yeah, isn't that colour amazing? Um, so yeah, I'm just changing about colours as I feel like. This blue section here is the Cheviot for ply, um, which I am enjoying. Um, a few people actually have sent me messages saying, um, that the uh, indigo dyed yarn is coming off in their, or indigo dyed yarn that they have that they're knitting with, the indigo comes off on their fingers. So um, I just thought I'd do a little quick thing here about indigo. Um, indigo is a physical bond. So with other natural plant dyes, um, it's a chemical bond, you call it. And with indigo, because it's dipped, it's a physical bond. So that means that basically the dye is bonded physically to the yarn rather than chemically. And what that means is when you're knitting with it, because it's physically bonded to the yarn, um, you'll see it coming off in your fingers, on your hands, maybe on your needles, um, because the more pressure you apply to the indigo dye jar, the more it will rub off. So imagine your jeans at the knees, they're always lighter if they're dyed with indigo. Very few jeans are actually dyed, I think, with natural indigo, and um, most of it's synthetic indigo, which also rubs off. Um, but yes, you will notice this. This is a normal part of using indigo dye yarn. Um, I try whenever I am creating the vat to minimize this as much as possible, but basically it's always gonna happen, pretty much in my experience anyway. Um, so what you can, a lot of people are scared that it's gonna um, like come off when they soak it, but don't worry, it, it won't. Um, if you're really unsure, I would suggest knitting a swatch with like two different colours and uh, soaking it and see what happens. 
but um some people recommend giving it a vinegar like a vinegar bath um you could do that if you wanted to or i would say just soak it but like yeah so just be aware that it will come off in your fingers that's a normal part of working with indigo and um, because it is that different type of bond um but don't worry yeah just wash your hands when you finish knitting um, I would say use them with metal needles. So you'll probably want to use the Cheviot with metal needles anyway, as it's quite toothy. Um, and don't wear any white t-shirts below your indigo dyed things for at least a while. Um, so yeah, you kind of have to be a little bit careful and a little bit clued in when you use indigo dyed yarn because it's not like using anything else. Um, but I feel that it's really worth it for the colour you get. It's such a dual tone blue that it's just... And it also opens up a whole variety of other colours, natural colours that you couldn't get otherwise. So I really think it is actually really worth it to persevere with it if it does annoy you. It doesn't annoy me, I'm obviously used to it, but... So yeah, indigo dye yarn. So I totally went off topic there. Now, I was showing you this bit is the back. This bit is the armpit or the oxner. So this is, I actually thought this was the left, but it must be the right. So it will look something like, this is the back here. So I don't know. If so you'll get a wee bit of the stripe at the front and then I will obviously pick up the stitches here for the arms which I might do in my Cumbrian four ply in this nice grey possibly. I have a little bit of my Causeway Teeswater South Down yarn left so I want to definitely get a bit of pink on the front on the left hand side. Um, because I want to show off a bit of that nice pink colour and I will, I have confirmed now I will be getting more of this this year but it might be slightly different, I don't know. So yeah and this is the older dye jar. So I have knitted like a lot, this is a lot for me to knit in a week so I'm really really pleased that I'm making such good progress. Um, all my sports activities have been cancelled so I have quite a lot of time in the evenings now to knit. And I'm thinking of dedicating at least one evening to reading books because I have so many books I want to read. And I took quite a lot of books out of the library um, a few days ago because they're shut now. And they said you can keep them for basically as long as you want until they open them again and there won't be any fines. So I took a bunch of books out, including a cookbook, um, a dystopian novel. few other random novels so yeah very pleased with my progress on this um so yeah i'm not really working on anything else right now but if you have a lot of stash yarn in different weights like this would be a quite a good project to use up some stuff um i particularly like it for showcasing all the different colors of the naturally dyed yarn that i have um, oh yes, and a book that I picked up at the library actually, I can't believe they had this in our local library, I was really surprised, was this is one of the books I took out, Seasonal Plant Dyes by Alicia Hall and she has some absolutely lovely, um, I'll just show you, she's some really nice projects and ideas for making things and dyeing things and she talks about different mordants and different flowers and plants and dyeing with fabric with wool with all sorts of things and um yeah i she this girl alicia 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 discovered natural dyeing um, when she worked for the National Trust. Um, she was mainly into horticulture uh, and looking after plants and she decided to give natural dyeing a go. 
and um, yeah I don't know if she does this all the time now or but yeah it's quite a nice book especially you know if you're starting out and she does like quite a nice overview So yeah, it could be in your local library as well. I was surprised. Um, so, um, yeah, last time I showed you the St. Patrick's Mini Skin Kit. Did I show you the Rufus Mini Skin Kit? I maybe did, I can't remember. But I have some of the Rufus Minis all, um, yeah, I think I did show you this actually. Inspired by my dog who you can watch, you can watch a whole episode about him. It'll be up soon. So yeah, they are 20 grams. It's on my natural sock base and all the colorways are inspired by Rufus. Um, and it will come in this little bag and five pounds from each kit goes to a local dog shelter. So. These will be in the next shop update. Um, I also just dyed up yesterday um, a cherry blossom mini skin kit. Um, when I put out on Instagram, what do you want to see for mini skin kits? Um, someone um, said a cherry blossom kit. And I was like, oh, that's so nice. I could have a go at doing some pinks. So I've done basically a fade. It doesn't show up great on the camera, but this is all from one dye vat. And um, I think I have 15 kits, but they fade really nicely together. And I think this would make an amazing shawl. I think it'd be really, really fun. Ooh. Um, yeah, it would actually be really nice with the Whistle Bear Weave Ring Bell Lilac Smudge would be quite nice with that. Um, so yeah, these will be in the next update. I think maybe I have enough minis for this update, but quite fun, aren't they? I like them. Um, and these are dyed with cochineal, which I don't use very much actually, but I love the color you get from it. It's a very striking, summery, cool toned pink. Um, so yeah. There's that. I also did, you might laugh at this, you might not laugh, I don't know, but um, I I went a bit dye crazy yesterday and just decided that I was gonna try and like make a new color. So I just went for it and I came up with this. This is a mini skein that I have called Cabin Fever. And I am going to make sock sets with these. I think I'm gonna have 20 sock sets. I don't know what color I'm gonna put with it yet though. I was thinking maybe something more neutral, but now I'm thinking something darker maybe, I don't know. But yeah, there's pops of like green and purple and it's quite fun so yeah these will be sock sets in the next update and lastly the thing I want to show you which I am very proud of is my spring minis um which I think are so cute sorry they're they're a little bit messy at the moment but So yeah, there's a light and dark yellow, a light and dark purple, a coral and a mint green. So again, these would make such a perfect colour craze shawl if you had uh, a mean colour to go with it. And uh, yeah, again, all naturally dyed, as is everything I have. Um, but yeah, I just think these are like the perfect spring colours. Um, would make some cool uh, gradient socks even. Um, but yeah, I think a shawl for these would be really, really fun. 
Um, I've seen someone knitted a ranunculus uh, in my natural sock. Could be really fun in some mini skeins. And I have ideas to knit one myself, <laughs> as I always do, <laughs> um, with my Wensley Deal 4 ply in a, a dark grey. So I'm going to dye it with eucalyptus and modify it with iron. Um, that's the plan. Anyway, I think it would make a really nice ranunculus. So short and sweet episode today i hope you enjoyed that and please do feel free if you want to just to subscribe if you're if you've just recently found me um and yeah if you want to know more about rufus my bedlington whippet that looks like an irish wolfhound everyone thinks he's an irish wolfhound you can find out more about him and what his day looks like um on the other video which i am going to post very soon so yes, what else do I have to tell you about? Oh yeah, my shop update time is the 27th of March at 8 p.m. GMT. Um, I always put a little timer in my Instagram story so you can figure out time zones and they will be shipped the next Monday or Tuesday. And yeah, I still have a few St. Patrick's uh, mini skin kits in the shop and um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you have any questions for me, do let me know um, about yarn or books or anything else. Um, yeah, do get in touch in the comments below. The other thing that I have to say also is, um, I don't know if I will continue the Dystopia Novels Club the whole five months. This will be month three. I may, I may finish it after this month. I'm not sure. Um, it's not selling great. So, but the North Atlantic Islands Club is going really well. So I might add some more spots to that. But if you're desperate to keep going with the Dystopia Novels Club, let me know, and um, I. I can keep doing that and um, just in very small quantities um but yeah i also have a couple of collaborations coming up but i don't think i can tell you about them yet also today i'm wearing my um fur socks by uh, melody hoffman be mandarins and um, these were sample knitted by my friend liz and I've decided to, uh, I want to nick a pair of my, that's a sample just to wear. And I just love this pattern. This colorway has no, I'm really holding my leg up in a weird way here, but I just made up this colorway. It doesn't have a name. Um, but it's a nice texture sock and it's nice and long in the leg, which is really nice. So I'll, I'll let you know how they go. But yeah, thanks for joining me today and I hope to see you again next week. And yeah, I'm going to go this time. <laughs>